the federal government has responded to news Labor is dumping its unpopular franking credit policy. In an exclusive interview with Sky News, opposition leader Anthony Albanese confirmed the original plan has been scrapped and a review is taking place. But in a press conference, Matthias Cormann has accused Mr Albanese of putting the policy on life support. Let's take a listen to the full address. Uh, today, uh, confusion reigns about uh, Labor's uh, tax on retirees. Uh, Labor's uh, tax attack on older Australians was comprehensively rejected by the Australian people at the last election. And Anthony Albanese should do the right thing about older Australians and scrap uh, Labor's retiree tax. Uh, it is a tax which would have harmed many uh, older Australians. In fact, uh, it is a tax uh, which would have harmed low-income older Australians while uh, actually uh, not doing uh, anything at all at the, high, at the very high income end. Uh, people at the very high income end would have been completely uh, unaffected by Labor's tax on retirees, whether, whereas, whereas of course uh, lower income older Australians would have been those most harmed uh, by Labor's tax on retirees. Uh, clearly some Labor people were briefing out today that Labor would scrap uh, Labor's retiree tax uh, and uh, today Anthony Albanese has put it back on life support. Anthony Albanese should do the right thing. He should do the right thing by low-income older Australians. He should make very clear uh, that Labor uh, will scrap uh, their retiree tax. It's an ill-thought-out, harmful, unfair tax which the Australian people comprehensively rejected uh, and uh, he should stop playing games and uh, just uh, get on with it. Happy to take questions. Were you surprised to see Labor who's officially done this well, I mean, this morning uh, everyone was led to believe that Labor had dumped its tax on retirees. It's a tax uh, which would have harmed many, many low-income older Australians. Uh, and indeed, it would not have had any impact on high, very high-income uh, Australians. It would have harmed many uh, low-income older Australians. Uh, it was ill-thought-out, it was harmful, and indeed it was unfair. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think that many Australians would have been relieved to see this morning that Labor was dumping uh, their tax on retirees, but it turns out that uh, later today, uh, Anthony Albanese actually put Labor's ill-thought-out, unfair, harmful retiree tax back on uh, life support. Anthony Albanese needs to do the right thing by low-income older Australians in particular and scrap uh, this ill-thought-out uh, Labor attack uh, on low-income older Australians and uh, you know, he should not be holding on uh, to this ill-thought-out, harmful, unfair, will shorten policy. He clearly is showing uh, that he uh, can't do what is right by older Australians. In your opinion, what were the problems with that policy? Well, it is a policy that would have harmed uh, low-income uh, older Australians in particular. Uh, it is, uh, you know, let's just, let's just remind ourselves what franking credits are all about. Franking credits are there uh, to avoid double taxation. And Labor's policy uh, would have uh, meant uh, that low-income company shareholders would have been hit with a tax uh, that high-income uh, shareholders would have been able to fully deduct. Uh, it was uh, completely unfair, it was ill-thought-out, it was rejected by the Australian people at the last election for good reason. Uh, and uh, if Anthony Albanese uh, cared uh, about the future opportunities and aspirations of all the Australians who've worked hard all their lives, uh, he would have come out today and confirmed that Labor were, were scrapping uh, what was always a bad, ill-thought-out, harmful, unfair policy. Do you think they'll, or do you suspect that they'll bring a version of that policy in if they do in government? Well, 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 who knows what they'll do. I mean, confusion reigns today. Ah. Clearly somebody was briefing out uh, that Labor would scrap uh, their tax on retirees uh, only uh, to be uh, corrected by Anthony Albanese later in the day. Anthony Albanese put Bill Shorten's uh, tax attack on retirees back on life support. Uh, that is very bad news for hard-working Australians around Australia because people around Australia clearly understood that Labor's uh, tax attack on retirees uh, was bad for them, was bad for the economy, was bad for Australia, which is why they voted against it comprehensively at the last election. On another issue, interest rates. Do you think we need to put interest rate cuts on hold? And if so, why? Well, monetary policy is entirely a matter for the Reserve Bank. I mean, the Reserve Bank makes these decisions uh, independently, uh, and that is a very important feature uh, of, uh, of our system. Uh, I'm confident that the Reserve Bank will continue uh, to review all of the economic data, all of the economic uh, information, and make decisions as appropriate, and, and we back their independence. On bushfires, what are some of the challenges that the economy is facing now because of the widespread disaster? 
Uh, well, look, I mean, it's, it's too early to quantify uh, the uh, economic impact uh, of uh, those bushfires. I mean, clearly, there will be uh, an impact and we'll be reviewing uh, the economic data as it comes through in coming weeks uh, and months. And of course, as we are working to prepare the budget, the 2020-21 budget, uh, we will be assessing all of that data and make judgments accordingly as we uh, put the next budget together. On cuts to elite funding, why has money for elite sports been cut? Well, look, I mean, we uh, always uh, obviously need to make uh, judgments uh, to uh, prioritise the allocation of limited resources and, and these are judgments that have been made uh, in order to ensure that there was the broadest possible beneficial impact uh, across Australia from uh, the federal investment in sport. The AOC claims, though, that funding has been... Can I jump in on that? Sorry. Um, Minister, were you aware that Richard McKenzie was running for mayor in 100 Look, individual ministers, uh, you know, run obviously their responsibilities, uh, you know, you know th themselves, and that is a matter that uh, Minister Mackenzie uh, has addressed uh, comprehensively. Uh, I'm aware that Minister Mackenzie, of course, has reviewed the recommendations uh, from uh, the Auditor General, and those recommendations, of course, will be taken on board into the future. But, but were you personally aware that she was running her own process? Well, I, I was not involved, obviously, uh, in the process of allocating. Uh, those uh, those grants. I mean, these are processes that are managed by individual ministers. I mean, that is the usual way. And uh, let's just be very clear: uh, all of the uh, projects that received grants were eligible to receive those grants. And as the Auditor General recognised, uh, the uh, intent of the program uh, was uh, absolutely uh, achieved. And um, and indeed, I mean, this is quite different uh, from. You know, s s uh, grants programs that were run under the Labor administration, where the Auditor General uh, made s quite harsher findings than that. Should that money but have do been? Support, do you support ministers then ignoring departmental advice on grants and aiming the money for their own political ends on marginal electricity? Uh, well, I, I don't accept the premise of that question. You know, obviously. You know, ministers, uh, you know, make uh, decisions. I mean, governments are elected. The government of the day has certain responsibilities, uh, obviously acting on advice. Uh, but, you know, in the end, it's the government of the day which is accountable to the Australian people. Do you think that money should have been redirected to elite sport funding? Yeah. Well, look, you know, the decisions that we've made uh, are, you know, there for all to see. We stand by those decisions. Uh, they've made a significantly beneficial, they've had a significantly beneficial impact in communities all around Australia. Obviously, uh, when you are dealing, in particular, in a fiscally constrained environment with limited resources uh, and a huge um, a number of potential uh, projects able to be supported, you do need to prioritise, and, and that is what we did. Will more money be... So, sorry? The, the so Richard on the phone, McKenzie it's very hard to hear the, the question sorry, on the phone. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Does, um, still does have Richard the McKenzie still have the support of the party? Uh, Bridget McKenzie uh, is a great minister who does a great job and absolutely she has the support. The AOC says funding has been slashed by 20% over the past eight years. Coming into an Olympic year, how do you plan on financially supporting your athletes? Well, in you know, we will always make decisions on how we can uh, stretch limited resources in the best possible way across all of the appropriate priorities. That's what we'll continue to do into the future. Are you, are you worried about what the bushfires, what the bushfires, what kind of impact it's going to have on the economy? Well, I just answered a question in relation to that. Um, it's too early to uh, quantify the economic impact of the bushfires. I mean, clearly there will be an impact uh, and you know we will be very closely monitoring uh, the data, the economic data and information that comes through over the next few weeks and months as we're putting the 2020-21 budget together and we'll make uh, judgments as appropriate at that time. Just on that, um, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Jennifer, there's some people here. Um, just how important that impact do you think on consumer confidence for bushfires? Uh, well, uh, look, I mean, you know, obviously it's not a uniform impact uh, right across Australia. I mean, there's, it, it, the, the impact will be different in different parts of Australia and as I've uh, just indicated, it's too early to quantify the impact. We'll be uh, monitoring uh, the economic data as it comes through at a uh, localised and national level in aggregate over the next few weeks and months, and we'll make judgments accordingly. Do you think another interest rate can't be more assist in that? Uh, well, you know, as I've indicated earlier, uh, monetary policy is a matter for the Reserve Bank. The Reserve Bank makes these decisions independently, as, as, as they must, and, and we will continue to make decisions 
on how we can best support uh, impacted uh, communities. I mean, the Prime Minister has led an unprecedented uh, level of uh, national support uh, into bushfire uh, impacted communities uh, in uh, recent uh, weeks and months. And, uh, you know, obviously we'll continue to monitor uh, the impact in uh, specific regions, but also the impact uh, nationally, and we'll make judgments on how we can best respond to that uh, into the future. Do you have any plans at the moment? So, no, no, you can. Sorry, we've got some questions Just here. One last one. Do you have any plans at the moment, though, to stop um, the, the impact or damaging the economy, these bushfires? Well, we've, um, we've put in place a significant uh, uh, number of measures to support local businesses, to support farmers, to support communities that are impacted by the bushfires. And, and of course, uh, we will continue to build on the measures that have already been announced. I mean, the Prime Minister announced a, a $2 billion bushfire recovery fund and, and about $400 million worth of measures out of that have been uh, announced already. There are other uh, measures uh, that, that will uh, be announced in the next uh, few weeks uh, and months. And indeed, in the context of the budget, we will, uh, of course, continue uh, to make judgments on what sort of um, further measures need to be put in place to support those communities directly impacted by the bushfires, but to also support those sectors of the uh, national economy uh, that have had an impact, like, for example, the tourism sector. And just on, sorry, Senator McKenzie again. Um, what is the point of having published guidelines to determine merit of grants recipients if the minister is just going to ignore them? Well, I, I don't agree. Uh, I don't accept the premise of that question. I mean, look, there, there is an Auditor General support. Uh, the minister is obviously very aware of the recommendations in that report. The Auditor General uh, recognised uh, that the intent of the programme uh, was achieved uh, and indeed all of the grants that were allocated were uh, eligible uh, and you know of course uh, in terms of the recommendations that were made by uh, the Auditor General I mean you know I'm confident that Minister McKenzie will of course take those recommendations on board. If Brisbane yes. were to win the games in 2032 would more money be spent on the athletes? Uh, well look uh, again I mean 2032 um, so you know we are uh, you know right now starting to put the 2020 21 uh, budget together um, and of course I mean every year when we put the budget together every year when we work on a half yearly budget update uh, we review all of the uh, needs all of the opportunities all of the challenges all of the economic data all of the fiscal opportunities and we make judgments on how best to allocate limited resources to a whole variety uh, of uh, needs opportunities and, and, and challenges and and that is what we'll continue to do into the future and and you know if there is a scope uh, then, you know, of course, uh, you know, th there'll be judgment on, you know, what else can be afforded. Thank you very much. You have a good day.